Well, Renaissance wasn't at home. It's pretty late. Yes, I waited in front of her house for a while, but she didn't, I uh, didn't come home. Maybe she's at a friend's place. She might be at sister's house with the older friends, uh, other friends doing their club activities or whatever. So, uh, wait. What? <laughs> she was lying down on a sort of picture of her sister and her friends fooling around and playing games like they always do. I'm guessing maybe Mion probably asked Shion's help as well, maybe. And that's why Kasai went over there. I don't know. I thought so too, so I stopped by Mion san's house. But Rena san wasn't there either. Mion san was worried about her too. Oh. So maybe they, she wasn't informed. Then why did she. I don't know. Oh, really? Well, I wonder what happened to her. Hmm. She might have been caught by some hood. Though that would be unusual. I already told my staff to look for her just in case. I don't think that's what happened. She's not as weak as she looks. <laughs> anyway, why did she want us to see her? Why did she want to see me? Oh yeah, it's come back to, around to that, isn't it? Just like all that, that, that's probably why he was there, isn't it? It's like, okay, so you've got something that I dropped or something right way back to that. So that's the reason he was there. Yeah, so I took off his jacket. Again, you know, another misunderstanding. She only told him to go see Renner because she heard that Renner had requested to see him in person. Now it's like, like I keep saying, this is the answer arc to Onikakushi. But like, it's different in a couple of ways, like, one thing is, Nonika Kushi, everything was from Casey's perspective. So, you know, when the paranoia and all that kicked in for Keiichi, we didn't get, a, like, a perspective from a different character. So there wasn't quite as much, you know, evidence pointing toward him not being crazy, even though it seemed pretty obvious that he was losing his mind, essentially. Just like... But from that, it's just like, it seemed like, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, from this we can see, yeah, Renner's misunderstanding a lot of things. But in Onikakushi, we didn't quite get the other perspective to confirm anything like that, did we? Oh, I thought I told you. She said she found something you lost. Let's say I wanted to give it back to you in person. Hey, I guess she likes you or something. Any, anyway, I hope she's alright. Right, then the phone rang. Yes, I answer it while loosening his die. Yes, yes, I understand. At once. Yes, sir, sounded very serious and she only immediately figured out he, who he was talking to. Who was it? Was it my father? Yes. Sonsaka family has sent out an order to find Renaissance right away and to bring her to the main house. Oh? You mean Oreo give the order? I wonder what Radisson did. Will she have to peel off her own fingernails? I hope Oreo goes easy on her. Poor girl. Now the plot thickens even more. It's, I like it though. It blurs the lines, isn't it? It's just like, so what is the truth? Is it all just misunderstandings or is there some truth? What is going on? Rena hasn't come home yet. I'm just gonna assume that this is Keiichi and this is Mion. No, I heard that Rena ran away from home and that she's hiding somewhere. Hiding somewhere? What do you mean? So I just got this information. It seems the police are looking for her. What? An unmarked patrol car is watching her house right now. Seems like there are several patrol cars looking for her in the village. Little Kimiochi received a call from the police too. He was told to use the town network to find out if anybody knows where she is. You think they found the corpses we hid? We hid them deep in the mountains. They couldn't have found them that easily. No, it's 100% impossible. I guarantee you that. Wow, how can he be so sure? Well, to tell you the truth, 
let its own Zeka family take care of them. They moved the bags to a secret place. Ah, ha ha! Told you, man! Well, I didn't. I didn't say anything at the time, did I? It's like, I mentioned during that scene where she noticed the bodies were missing, I was like, ah, I remember what this was. I didn't reveal it at the time, obviously. But it's because Mion had it arranged for them to be moved to a different location. So that makes, <laughs> makes her go even further off the deep end in this conspiracy. Secret place? Calm down, don't worry about it. I heard that there's a major logging project happening this summer on the mountain where we hid the corpses. So I arranged help, uh, so I arranged help and took care of it. I see. Reliable person when you're on my side, but you'd be a scary person to have as an enemy. <laughs> I recommend you never underestimate me. So it's not the corpses they're after. Why are the police trying to find her? I don't know, but it seems like many gang members knew that Tepe, Hojo, and Rina Mamiya were trying to blackmail the Ryuga family. So that might be the reason why the police are after Rena. I don't think they consider her a suspect yet. But they probably want her as a material witness. That's the same thing! Damn it! We're gonna finally regain her peaceful life. I'm not going to let them ruin it. Mion, we need to help her. Of course! Hurry to all my family and come here to find her before the police can. You can trust the Son Saka family. You can protect her from the police. 120% guaranteed. It's just like... Like, it puts this like... Just like... So many twists and turns all be misunderstood. It's like, you got... Rena just like feeling that the uh, Son Saka family are out to get her. And so she's relying on Oishi and the police. They, like, take her information for it, and it just, like, it all becomes, just, like... Can you imagine if at the end this arc is just, like, ends with them just, like, all be like, Oh, it was all misunderstanding. Oh, my bad. Just find their first isn't going to solve the problem. We have to do something to clear of suspicion. I'll think about that after we found her. We can make as many alibis as she needs, and as many witnesses for the alibis as necessary. We have very good lawyers too. We'll never abandon our friends when they're in trouble. That's right. You can save Renner. Damn it, I wish I could do more than to depend on you, Mion. Well, don't worry about it. It's okay to let somebody else handle the situation when that person is better at it. This old man will take care of everything. Also, I'll create an alibi to fool the cops watching the whole village. Let's say Rena was spotted near uh, Kogura. Kogura. The wider the search area, the fewer policemen in one place. I see, that's a great idea. This is like nothing to us. We did mo uh, more during the dam conflict. I'll protect Rena and Kate Chan. Rena trusts you more than anybody, so she might come to you. If she does, please protect her. And give me a call right away. Yeah, will do. Rena's a strong girl. She should be fine. She can overcome this. Yeah, I think so too. I say to say something. Rena hadn't been her normal self lately. If she uh, wah, 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 was her normal self, I'd have no doubt that she could overcome this. But Rena is deeply convinced that Tarkin and Sand's delusions are true. Rena believes the Onizaki family is behind the conspiracy. I'm not sure if she trusts the Onizaki family to protect her. I'm just gonna assume it's me on that. Don't worry, I'm her friend too. She'll understand once I sit down uh, sit down and talk to her. Just like Kate Chen and I cleared up a misunderstanding. I can do that with her. <laughs> I still can't believe that you believe such a crazy cons uh, story though. It's just that the way she just says like just like Kate Chan and I cleared up. Shouldn't it be just like you and I cleared up our misunderstanding? Rather than referring to him to by name, it just sounds a bit odd. Well, I can't believe I did either. It's going to be the most embarrassing thing to ever happen in my life. I really was deeply convinced until I talked to Mion. Even after the promise of friendship we made, I doubted her. 
Dark the darkness land was endowed with magic, and I think the scrapbooks she wrote also carried a spell. Scrapbooks can make people go mad. Wait. <laughs> he's like embarrassed for believing that conspiracy theory, and then he's like, in his mind, just like, Our tired of signs endowed with magic, and I think the scrapbooks had a spell of some sorts. Just wouldn't like that doesn't really make it sound any more logical, does it? Scrapbooks can make people go mad. They're forbidden scrapbooks, nobody was supposed to read them. Rene was captivated by the power of that magic, even after darkness ends death. After wake her up, I've got a very bad feeling about it. Oh, sorry, somebody's at the door. I don't know that me, but Okay, yeah, I thought I got it backwards. Oh sorry, somebody's at the door. It might be the police. I have to go now. Okay. I'll tell them that Renner is hiding near Gorgora. To ask you something, just keep telling them you don't know anything. Okay, got it. Mian waited for my answer, then hung up the phone. After she hung up, I slowly started to feel like Renner was being consumed by some huge, unthinkable fate. It's not only the police I'm worried about, I'm also worried about Renner. Because well, I'm a little worried because Renner is ensnared by the power of Dr. Sand's magic. I fear that she might be suffering from incredible anxiety. Oh, right. Renna might be hiding at her secret base in the garbage dump. Renna once told me that she used to spend time there when Renna Sand was at her house. And she told me that she hid the scrapbooks there too. <coughs> She's hiding there, she must be hungry by now. I should bring her something to eat. I went to the kitchen to look for some junk food. My mother looked confused. Mom, I'm going to go somewhere, but I'll be right back. This time, it's late. How late? It's very important, so I promise I'll be right back. And if Rena comes here while I'm gone, let her stay in my room. And if someone calls and asks you if you know where she is, just tell them you don't know and hang up, okay? My mom looked angry as I was leaving the house at so late an hour, but I rushed out of the house before she could say anything. Can you imagine how awkward it would have been if he rushed to the door and the door was locked? And <laughs> he's like, ah, I was gonna unlock the door. Just like, meanwhile, his mother's just glaring at him and just like, what do you think you're doing? He's like, ah, I was, I was meant to rush at the door so you couldn't get to this awkward point. <laughs> I grabbed the flashlight from the wall of the garage, got on my bicycle and sped off into the lower darkness. The moon looked beautiful, but in a creepy way. I feel like something terrible is going to happen. I don't know what it is, but I know it's coming. Something is going to happen. Well, something usually happens, isn't it? <laughs> Just like, what do you think about it? It's like, oh, something's going to happen. It's like, yeah, anything. Just like... You walk to a door. That's something that happens. The moon seemingly knowing just what that something will be. It looked like it was laughing at us, pacing back and forth in confusion. Damn it! Laugh all you want. Laugh at this funny story as much as you want. I'm not going to laugh. I'm going to fight. I'm going to smash through whatever fate is waiting for us. Rena, I hope you're there. Even my bicycle needs some oil. It was making a la lousy noise as I pedaled. Damn it, even my bicycle is laughing at us. He's like, <laughs> Higurashi, when they cry Kai, or when they laugh, you could say. <laughs> Tips the others, but not the film. The others. Achievement village of the body snatchers. Wasn't that wasn't that another film? I I'm not sure if I've ever seen it. I think it was also based on a book, wasn't it? I can't remember. What is our tip for the others? Oh, Renner's perspective. Wait. I just realized, is that like a subtle difference that, that's happened throughout this, or what? I don't know. Because I feel like the font was originally pink whenever it was Renner's perspective. But it feels like it's got increasingly 
darker as her descent into madness is gone. Is that an actual thing, or am I imagining that? Because if that's an actual thing, that's a nice little touch there. It's like, okay, we're gonna make the font get darker and darker as she descends into madness. That's that's pretty nice little attention to detail. I finished talking with Uishi on the phone and soon left the phone booth. I realized something in a chill ran through my body. That's probably because it's cold outside at night. Well, maybe. Well, obviously that's not the case. I was in a fern booth that stood out tremendously in the dark. Somebody must have seen me. I was certain. I was being watched. I saw glowing eyes staring at me in the dark. It wasn't human. Well, then you don't have to worry about it then, surely. <laughs> just like I was just a cat. Was it an illusion? No. I knew who they were. They were the ones controlling the three families who ruled in Bizarre. It was a cat all along! Its eye level was too low for it to be human, and its outline was vague. I knew from the past records that they were physically frail. Maybe it is a cat. So, like, is she imagining it, or is it just a cat, or is it a person, or is it something else? The silhouette switch indicated its inhuman appearance was unbelievably unrealistic. You know, the way I worded that, I just like, just like, oh, is it a cat, or a human, or could it be something else? That's precisely Renner's mindset right now, isn't it? Just like, like, but taking it all completely seriously, especially on the unrealistic ones. So that which is an human appearance was unbelievably unrealistic. Especially its protruding head. One of the scrapbooks I received from ESN described their appearance in detail. Their eyeballs would appear red like blood, and their bodies smell like ammonia, even though some of them have, at times, been captured around the world. All of them melted or disappeared, leaving no trace behind. Well, back up, Renner. How much of the scrapbook details are you leaving out? You leave notes in the dark as well now. It's like, what the hell did you read? I mean, we saw bits of it that had some plausibility, but now you're kind of getting a bit more further deeper into conspiracies. The only traces remaining are the marks proving a descent to Earth. Right then, the impossible unrealistic silhouette took a step closer and got closer and closer towards me, making a realistic noise as it crunched across the gravel. The noise pulled me back to reality. Look up closer, you monster! It kept walking towards me. It sounded like it was kicking pebbles everywhere as it walked. It was coming closer and closer. It was scared. So I said the same thing once again. And this time, the glass door of the phone booth I was just inside the rattle and shake. Bang! It made weird sounds as if it were being struck by something. I screamed loudly in fear and started running. I ran so hard that it felt like my lungs were about to explode, and then I looked back to find that the thing was no longer chasing after me. Was it my imagination? Yup. Maybe she was shaking like crazy, and that was what was making that sound, probably. I don't know. Just like, try to, try to find logic in this insanity here. There's no way it was just my imagination. I definitely heard the sound of the gravel being kicked and the phone booth and rattling. But I needed to calm down. Right then, I needed to make my heart stop beating so fast. I'd have to fight them eventually. The next time they appeared, I was going to strike back at them. It honestly feels like... It just makes me think of Stephen King novels. The way this scene is panning out, you know? It's like, except if it was a Stephen King novel, the insanity wouldn't actually be insanity. Or it could be, depending on, like, he does a variety of different kind of ways of doing a horror story. Sometimes it's where the character is completely lost in mind and seeing things. And then there are times where it's just like, they think they're seeing things, but it's actually there. Well, there was something there, but was it what she thought it was? Or was it something as simple as a cat or something? That's that that seems like a more logical one, really, isn't it? Probably a cat. 
but was it? Next time they appeared, and eventually I, I was going to strike back at them. I was going to squish their heads with my big hatchet. Well, I certainly hope that doesn't come to that if it was a cat. I'd protect him in sour. It was my duty to do so. I wouldn't allow them to do whatever they wanted. I saw the light flickering in my head again. Again, I just think of Stephen King there. He's like, what, the dead lights? I forget, I forget what that was. It was, it was in Stephen King's It, but I think, like, he kind of, like, references, like, stuff throughout his novels as well. Kind of has an odd connecting thing going on, doesn't he? Yeah, that's definitely red now. It used to be pink. I'm pretty sure it used to be pink, this font. Even if I turned on the light in my hideout, nobody would see it because of the piles of abandoned cars in the way. It honestly actually looks lighter here, doesn't it? Maybe it's because of the uh, lamp that she has or wherever. But it certainly doesn't look like it's... Like, it looks like it's in the late afternoon or evening, looking at, like, the foliage around here, you know. All this green grass bushes and blah among the garbage dump but I don't know well I'm aware of that I decided not to turn it on just in case wait what oh so your light isn't even on yet it's a bit scary to hide in this quiet place alone in the dark holding my breath it's not very dark right now you got you got the wrong image here it should be during the night time I'd have to keep myself busy with something, but my brain won't work properly, and I don't even have the energy to think about what to do from now on. Whenever I don't have the courage to lie down, to sleep, and regain my strength fire. Every time I heard or thought I heard a suspicious sound, I'd gasp and stare into the dark. But that's certainly not going to help your sanity, is it? That's all I did all night. When she believes that the Sons like a family was behind the conspiracy, but he can't do much without solid evidence. For that, he has to locate the facility where they're doing research on the parasites. But we have no idea where it is. I think the urea clinic is still the most likely site. But I have no credible evidence. Really, I don't think they do their research in a place so obvious even I could guess it. They might be using one of the bomb shelters that was built during the war as some kind of secret underground research center. Now that I come to think about it, I remember a secret building nobody is allowed into on the premises of the Friday Shrine. I think it's called the Ritual Storehouse. According to Mia San, and the research of Friday Shrine is the center of the local worship of Oyo Shirasama. I'm curious to know what Ritual Storehouse looks in Japanese, but I probably won't be able to recognize it because it'll be in kanji. Log. Yeah, <laughs> no chance of translating that. The priest keeps the tools for ceremonies in the ritual storehouse. One of the ceremonies is the bizarre festival of Tanagashi. And so the shrine storage must be something very secret. If I remember right, but Tonikashi was also a medical ritual designed to vaccinate and immunize people against the all too strong parasites. That means the tools they used for the Tonikashi were medical ones. If my guess is right, the ritual storehouse is the most secret place in the village, as well as the most appropriate building to use for medical purposes. It's suspicious. It might be a secret research center in the ritual storehouse. Ah, damn it! The police should be performing a raid on the ritual storehouse, not the area clinic. Why didn't I think of that when I was talking with Oishi on the phone earlier? I hope Oishi realizes this too. Should I go back to the phone booth and tell him about the ritual storehouse? But when I thought that, I heard a car coming closer. I held my breath. It's not normal for a car to come here this late at night. 
I thought about many possible scary scenarios, which made me nervous. After a while, I saw the headlights of the car near the former dam construction office. The car must have passed by me and gone to the office. But it's a deserted, empty office building. There's nothing there. It's not a place where people would visit this late at night. While I was glaring into staring into the dark, the engine of the car stopped and its headlights were turned off. I could see two flashlights flickering in the darkness. The lights moved into the office building. They must think I'm hiding there. I held my breath and kept watch on their movements. I can't tell you who they are, but I bet they're pawns of the Sonazaki family. They know that I ran away from home. They must be looking for me everywhere in the village. Though I needed to conceal my breath, my face started feeling itchy and I had an urge to stretch my legs. My own body infuriated me. The humidity made my sweat all over, so the back of my knees and my neck had been itchy for quite a while. Scratching would make an unbelievably loud noise, so I decided not to scratch anymore. It usually doesn't make any noise when I just scratch some mosquito bites. I'm probably just being nervous and overacting. There's quite a distance between me and them, and I'm in the dark holding my breath. They wouldn't notice even if I sneezed, let alone scratch myself. But I didn't want to make any noise at all, so I tried to forget the itchiness. But after all that, I ended up scratching everywhere like mad. I have to live in hiding like this for a while. I don't know how long I can go on when I'm so nervous on just the first night. I need to toughen up more so I can remain blessed even in a situation like this. I force myself to relax, scratch my neck without hesitation and try to cope with a sticky sweat all over my body. I started getting hungry. My stomach growled. That's a good sign though, since it means I'm starting to relax. I can't eat yet though, I'd make a lot of noise. I decided to wait until they finished looking for me and went away. Go away, go away! I can eat if you go away! It seemed like the intentions I was sending out bore fruit. They had stopped looking around the building. I wonder, again, what it looks like in Japanese. Well, you got a kanji character and a kanji character. Look at that! <laughs> See what I mean about Japanese? They just use numbers. They've got kanji characters for numbers. Like, we've seen Takno's first name, Mio, in kanji characters, and she has the, uh... Her name is pretty much three and four. Like, the kanji characters for three and four. It's just like... Use there, but there, it's just like, no, just put the number two. Two people. That's, that's a kanji character for person or people. Well, what does that say? I don't know. I know that's cool and that's rare, but I don't know what these two kanji characters are. What we get in here? Hmm. Uh. I can't remember this con. Uh, well, not con character. Kind of kind of character. That's poo. That's ha. That's boo. Notice that? Just like you got a little circle, and then you got like that. Same character but different. It's, it's confusing, you know. I can't remember what that one is. Well, well, whatever. Hmm. No, nope, I can't see why it could be out of that. Nope. Draw the blank. <laughs> just like looking at all this and just like. What one could that have been? And I'm just like, I, I don't know. However, I must have concentrated my thoughts too strongly. They were pointing the flashlights in my direction. Did they notice me? No. Not only that, they're walking towards me. I made my body as small as possible, hid under the blanket and listened for their footsteps as carefully as I could. 
All the while I heard their footsteps coming closer and closer. Since the footsteps are coming straight towards me, they must already know where I am. I think it's scary. There's no way they already know where I am. If they did, they wouldn't have wasted their time looking for me around the office building. And they wouldn't walk as slowly as they did. It's just a coincidence that they're walking in this direction. Since I'm hiding under the blankets, I can't see who they are. I don't know where they're shining their flashlights. So I can't stick my hand out from the window to see who they are either. Wait, could you? Wait, but no. This thing could have been KH, but who did he go with? And you know, he he took his bike. Wait. Or maybe he arranged something with me on to get a ride. But then who who would be the driver? Maybe it's someone else. It's like, ooh, wait, the possibilities. It seems plausible that Katie could be one of them, though. I mean, his bike was, you know, making a hell of a racket, so maybe he end up getting a lift instead. Anyways, I just have to stay motionless like a rock until I sense they're gone. Wait, I don't think they were trying to rush us, so I go and sit my head out from the window to see who they are. Yeah, read that. Stop when the game near my hideout. I could hear their conversation. I don't think she's here. Let's look somewhere else. You look over there. I could tell by standing footsteps that they were separate ways. Where they went separate ways, and each of them is walking around the piles of trash separately. I made this out of downtown of an abandoned car. I just redecorated it. Now, if it is Keiichi or Mion or any of those, she'd probably recognize the voice. Or maybe she's so in paranoia mode that she wouldn't be able to recognize it either way. So on the outside, it still looks like nothing other than an abandoned car. But once you look inside, you can instantly tell it's more than that. So if they look inside, I'm done for. It's obvious that they're looking for me. Are they a Sonozagi Corps attack unit? If they find me, I'll be killed for sure. I know all too well that this place is perfect for murdering people. I kill two people here myself. If I can do it, it'll be no problem for them, because they're real professional killers. Even so, there's nothing I can do right now. I just have to pray that they'll leave here soon. At that time, I heard a slight beeping sound. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's definitely someone else, then, isn't it? It's not Kate, you know what? Zatsushi, I can hear you loud and clear. Yes. Gogora. Yes, understood. Oh! Oh, freaking K then, Camtasia, you crashed on me there. Not only did you crash on me there, but you fucked up the recording like 12 hours ago. When I originally recorded this, it didn't take me this long to realize this, obviously. It just took me 12 hours or so, because I originally recorded in the night, and I didn't feel like doing a post-commentary to accompany the bit, well... Just, just run down what happened here. Yeah. For some reason, my commentary went boop at this point in the video recording for, and it was about at least nearly 10 minutes, actually a little over 10 minutes of video left, and no commentary, except one little bit that popped up with a commentary. I can't remember what I said. It was very brief. It's like, I assume the microphone must have got dislodged, and then I must have, like, moved it back into place for like one or two seconds at most and then it just got dislodged again. I'm assuming that's probably what happened because all I get on there now is bzzz, which is the sound you get when when my microphone is not actually connected so yeah I gotta do post commentary instead and I wait until the morning to get around to this because yeah sucks so for reference, for me, the start of this is 32 minutes, 59 seconds, point 20 in the video, and I will click play on it in free. actually, let's move the, it's like I'm recording it with Camtasia, I could just record it with Audacity really, but anyways, let's move that away, 
I will press play in three, two, one, zero. Okay, so um, what's wrong? I I forget what 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 was wrong. What was something? I was, I'm obviously rambling at this point, like both in post and in the thing video. It seems like Renry Yugu is in Gagura. Somebody saw her there. Oh man, that's it. I can't even keep up with it. In order we have to find her no matter what, we have to bring her to him. It doesn't matter if she's in Sabaro or uh, oh, hot, 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 we have to find her. I can't keep up with it because I can't remember what my original commentary was. It'll be impossible to find her though. Do we still have to look? Renry Yugu has me a talk nose scrapbooks and he wants them. He has. He seemed pretty uh, upset about it, so I'm sure they're worth a loss. Which for, must further Renner's uh, conspiracy theories, there, isn't it? So, what are we going to do? Seems like he called the others, except the ones who are watching our house. So, we should go back to the office, too. Let's have some Bali team stuff. Heard their footsteps go further, and then I didn't hear any more. After a while, I heard the engine of the car starting. I'm gonna put this in full screen as I'm recording this, because I can't freaking see. That's the bit where my commentary just briefly sort of came back. I need this full screen. Where, where's the full screen? Full screen! Fucking get off that! I mean, it, it makes no difference to you, but I want to see the actual video, you know? So I can see the text as it's there, because... Some of the capture windows got in the way of it. Not that it makes any difference, like I said, because I just need the audio for this, and that's it. So I'm clearly rambling in my original commentary as well as my post commentary there, because there's quite a bit of a pause going on there, isn't it? I can't remember what I was rambling about. Well, it's probably about Renner taking misunderstanding, you know. But I got out from under the blanket and looked outside the window. The car made a U-turn and drove away. The sound of the engine faded away into the darkness. And I probably rambled some more there. Yeah, definitely rambled some more there. About what? I don't know. That was hours ago. This feels weird. Post-commentary. If only the commentary recorded properly. I heaved a sigh of relief. I scratched out all my itchy mosquito bites, wiped the uh, six right off my face and neck, and finally let myself to off. I'd heard the conversation clearly. There, the pawns of the Sonzaki corpse were added out. That's probably what I was rambling about. The, uh, things that she overheard, which was exactly what I said, isn't it? Matches with, the, with what her wish she told me. It's like, I would ramble about it myself, but I can't remember the context, because I literally just scrolled to this part of the video to do this post commentary. It said something very important. And you know, I can't keep up with the video itself because I don't know when I'll skip forward or not because I rambled a lot in the original recording. So I don't know how long I could ramble for, you know, in between each. It's like I could go through the text really fast suddenly, you know. Come on, me. Come on, come on, you anger all day. You're rambling on about... It's just like... What was the rambling on about during that? It's definitely about how she's misunderstanding the whole thing and how it's furthering her paranoia that there's a grand conspiracy and everyone's out to get her because, you know, someone actually wants the scrapbooks but she doesn't realize it's a wishy. Oh yeah, that's what I was rambling about. It's like, just like going up at the loop, like, Mion and Co are just like, they uh, said in them there, they clearly said they're after the scrapbooks. They send them there and all that because of, up until now I've only assumed that they were chasing me after me because I'd made send scrapbooks. And again, now I can't ramble because it's going fast. So like, me, no, again, I could have forced myself to believe that it was just my assumption. But they said it loud and clear. We want to find Renarigu. She has me attacking her scrapbooks. That's what they said. Now I can't ramble. They also said that they're keeping watch on my house. I'm not surprised. That's exactly what I would do if I were them. I can't go back to my house anymore. It's out of the question. But, in fact, they said something way more important from any, than any of that. They said... Renirigo was seen in Gogora. 
If I was in a normal situation, I'd probably think there's someone so I look like and I'd laugh out loud. Now she's thinking back to her greater conspiracy theory that she is yet to reveal. And it's like, whoa. But anyway, back to that one I was rambling about. It's like, Mion and Co. just like, sending people to look and they're like, I can't fucking keep up, but the situation's different now. Yes, I was dead, but she was at the festival. Fuck rambling, just get on with it. I'm here, but I was in Gagura. Yes, I'd write about it in her scrapbooks and I didn't want to believe it. They're coming closer to me and I don't mean this one is like that. Something beyond common sense is about to happen. Should I fight or should I run? Don't I don't even know what I should do. I feel like I'm rooted to the spot with fear. Am I about to be eaten? No, no, no! I don't want to be eaten alive. I want to run away if I can't win. The uh, the mouse coming I mean, on screen now must have been for some reason I can't remember. If I can't run, I want to fight. It's usually when I was rambling, probably. I'm going to be happy. I know I am. I am not going to sit for day and let them get me. But the enemy me has foretold of in the scrapbooks is coming close to me and start to eat me up. I'm in the garbage dump alone. If I disappear, it's right now without anybody knowing it. The person who was in Gogura would replace me and start living my life. So yeah, more kind of conspiracies from her. I don't even know how to title this part yet. Just like... I was playing freaking Tony Hawk's first kid of free. Part way through editing, I was like, ah, fuck, I'll just play this. Then I got pissed off with the game and remembered why I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's like, damn those competitions! They frustrate me so! So now I'm rambling about what I did during editing. <laughs> Nobody would notice the change, so I don't remember the full context of the whole video. My father wouldn't notice it, my friends wouldn't notice it. It would replace me without having anyone noticing it. Blah, blah. Wait, many people close to me might have been replaced already. That's right. So the like family is floating by terrorism, but I'm still part of what they are planning. Also, I remember drawing parallels between Onikakushi and, well, this. Well, actually, Tatari Goroshi in this. Most possessful elements scared of the cats and adults, they don't run away, they'll be eaten by the cats and they can move into the cats' bodies by so you use the homeless premises without the loose pair of cats in order to have the chair of the babies. See, I can't ramble, I gotta keep up with the text. The same thing goes with the Sonzaki family. They think they're doing by their own will, but they're just helping them without realizing it. That's exactly how they've lived since long ago, being the first hearts. We're nothing but a bunch of mice to them. Most mice are stupid, they don't even notice their existence. They help them to achieve their purpose, thinking they're living their lives by their own will. But very rarely, a mouse with wits is born. The mouse notices that he's being used, and he also notices their existence. But nobody believes him, so it's not a big deal. He starts thinking that it was his mistake, and he gets followed by them. Eventually, he disappears. But even more rarely, a mouse appears from nowhere, notices their existence, and objectively proves it. That mouse was Meosan. To them, the mouse was a rare and very dangerous existence. That's why they resorted to unbelievably bold and violent methods to try and eliminate that mouse when it appeared. But surprisingly, we knew about those measures. But the stupid mice didn't believe it, don't believe it. They don't notice that they are forcing them to not believe it, and that they are helping them in the end. That there, I mean. They killed Mio-san, and she appeared to the right instead of the center. And they tried to replace her. But they made a mistake, we found a real corpse of Mio-san. That's why they failed to replace her. They'll try to kill me and replace me too. Or they'll replace my friends in order to get close to me. They look just like the real people, but they're totally different inside. They're an abnormal existence that's beyond our imagination. And again, it's like uh, Tatari Gorochi, the comparison they made was when Keiichi, like, heard from his friends about the festival and he was like, Whoa! Remember that? I know, they'll appear. But I can't ramble, because text. No, they're already here. They're already here! Oh, yeah, that's where the... Yeah, this is where the video ends. In a long ramble, of course. So now I can ramble as much as I want, probably. 
So like, yeah, rather than whatever the hell I was actually rambling about at the end there, I think at one point in this, like, my nephew, like, uh, hit, hit himself on, like, a bookcase or something like that, bookshelf, and he was crying in the background. I remember that distracting me. He was alright in the end, obviously, but... That's all I can really remember from it, really. Oh, and there's the video it just ends like that. <laughs> just like so anyways, rambling so wrap this up with the rambling. Okay, so here here's the thing, right? It's like Meon and Co, they're like they're like um they're uh, I can't fucking even remember. Where am I even witness? We should send out all those police officers and all that to look for Renner because he's worried about her and interested in the scrapbook. And since Renna doesn't know anything about this at all, she, like, takes it as part of the conspiracy, then on Mion and Katie's side, they're trying to, you know, throw off the police because they think the police are looking for the bodies. That's why they think they're after Renna. So they, like, do that, and that furthers her paranoia because she doesn't realize this, of course. And all that jazz, you know? All swell. Anyways, it's a pain in the ass doing a post-commentary there. But anyways, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.